And welcome back. Time now for our legal segment. Today, we're learning all about Airbnbs, especially in Michigan. And what's allowed, what's not allowed, because I guess the rules change depending on where you are. So we have our favorite attorney in studio, attorney Jahan Crum Gibson from Great Lakes Legal Group to give us a better understanding. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, so what's the first thing we need to know? We're, we're all just thinking I can make a little extra money on the right. side. This is an easy way to do it. Right. So the first thing you need to do is to go down to the city that you live in and see what zoning says. Mm. Because every city can have their own laws governing short-term rentals. That's what Airbnb and Verbo is. It's a short-term rental. And there may be something that you have to do at the city. Even if they allow it, you might have to get a permit, something to that effect. Okay. The other thing that you need to do is look to see if there's something in the deed restriction that stops you from being able to do it. So what we've seen happen recently is people getting in trouble trying to operate an Airbnb and someone says, wait a minute, there's a deed restriction that says this property can only be used for residential purposes. And they've been making the argument that an Airbnb is a commercial purpose, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a business. So you need to try to check those things to see if either zoning or deed restriction will stop you from operating it or if you're in a condo. Condo bylaws can also restrict it as well. I was going to ask I know you were going there. these HOAs <laughs> yes. because they just uh, can create rules yeah. and rules and yeah. rules. Yeah. Um, is there any workaround? Uh, not necessarily. If it's in black and white, you know, like if we're talking about condo bylaws, mm -hmm. we had a situation recently where someone was renting a condo and then in turn was trying to rent it out as an Airbnb, yeah. you know, to make oh. a little extra cash. Okay, that's, that's enterprising. A lot. Um, that's a but lot. of course, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we see it all. And so, of course, what ended up happening, they're like, no, like that's you can't do that. The bylaws are clear, right? Um, with deed restrictions possible it may be a workaround. Sometimes you can get those things voided, but it mm -hmm. takes a court process, takes a long time to do. It depends on where you are and kind of what's going on. But if it's in black and white, if the zoning doesn't allow it, or if it's in condo bylaws, don't try to do it. Who would do the deed restriction? Is that when you buy the house or who else? Yeah, it travels for like over the years. It could oh, be a wow. deed restriction from 1948 that oh, you could be working on. with and it'll come down and if it's still in there, uh -huh. technically it can be enforced. Those things can be lifted though. It requires some work, but they can be lifted. Okay, so what would be the first steps? And if there was maybe a solution, mm -hmm. what do you recommend people do? Contact a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, property laws are very intricate. You know, it's not as simple as just going down to the courthouse and, you know, filing the small claims or something like that. You're definitely going to want to understand what's in that chain of title. Yeah. So that deed restriction from 1929. Right, right. You're going to want to see what's going on in the area, if it makes sense to even ask to do this thing and see if it's even feasible before you waste the time and money. It may just make sense to go get another property and, and use it as an Airbnb. As, you know, Airbnb is newer. Mm -hmm. As things evolve, are there maybe loopholes? Now it's uh, content houses. Yeah. You know, people yeah. want to come and film a few episodes yep. in your home. Yep. Um, that's not the same as Airbnb, or is it? It's not, well, I'd argue, depending on who my client is, right. <laughs> what I would argue. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it comes down to use mm -hmm. and what you can prove and what you can argue, and then what city you're in. So yeah. some cities may be a little bit looser and say, hey, that's fine, you can do these temporary things because filming content in a house isn't a short-term rental where someone's coming, right. bringing a family in and staying over a weekend or a week or whatever the right. case is. Right, so right, right. it's really going to come down, it's very property-specific, yeah. Very city specific. Are these things you should know before you buy or just it just is what it is because it's the city perhaps? Yeah, for sure. I always recommend, especially if you know you're buying it for this purpose, yeah. whether it's going to be a long-term rental or a short-term rental, before you actually close, go talk to an attorney so that we can pull the chain of title, see what's in the deed restrictions and the zoning and tell you if you can even do what you want to do there. And if we can quickly, the protections, if you do rent uh, an Airbnb, there was a, a Michigan case recently. The, a woman got an $18,000 bill. Yeah. It looked like they were trying to do the whole bathroom renovation on of course, her on one her back. visit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just how can we protect ourselves from things like that? Yeah, when you're signing up for these Airbnbs, uh, Airbnbs read the fine print. Yeah. I mean, I know we normally don't. We're rushing. We're moving quickly. But make sure you read it. And then after the fact, if you're slapped with an $18,000 bill, definitely call a lawyer. Don't roll over. Some folks will try you so they can get that renovation done mm -mm. off your pocket. And not it's up not in worth here. It, so. Not happening. Don't roll over. Call a lawyer. Thank you so much.
much. Of course. Uh, if you ever need legal advice, you can go to Great Lakes Legal Group's website. We have a link to that on our website, foxhoodetroit.com. Slash links. You'll find it there. Quick break. We'll be right back.